What's going on guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about the Jurassic Park franchise and how I think things could get better with the implementation of more of Michael Crichton's ideas into the movies. For those of you who didn't know, this is the author of both Jurassic Park and The Lost World, which were books later turned into movies by Steven Spielberg in the 90s. The first of which was kind of like a light adaptation of the story, but the second had almost nothing to do with the novel whatsoever, and it really can't be called much of an adaptation at all. Today, I wanted to go over what I think the series became over time and how adding more of the unused ideas from the books back into the series could help it out in the long run. Now before I go any further, I want to mention to you guys that today's video is sponsored by CuriosityStream, the world's first streaming service addressing our lifelong quest to learn, explore, and understand. Offering up thousands of non-fiction titles, documentaries, and exclusive originals from some of the world's best filmmakers, this is the place to find fascinating stories that are entertaining without any of that reality show nonsense. CuriosityStream is the Netflix for nerds, the Hulu for history buffs, and the Disney Plus for the scientists in us all. And at under $20 a year, it's extremely affordable, coming out to about $1.67 per month. CuriosityStream is all always been the perfect sponsor for my channel due to their wide selection of dinosaur documentaries. Just like this one called Ancient Yellowstone, which of course talks about some of the dinosaurs that lived way back in the day during the Cretaceous period, which I found to be really cool and honestly one of the more interesting topics, you know, because it's Yellowstone, when it comes to this sort of thing. Curiosity Stream is the entertainment brand for people that want to know more, and it's available on Roku, Android, Xbox, iOS, Chromecast, Amazon, Apple, and several smart TVs as well. New shows come out every week, so whether you want to know about science, sports, music, technology, nature, or history, you can find it all on CuriosityStream. Just go to CuriosityStream.com slash Clayton for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series. And just for you guys, use promo code Clayton and you're going to save 25% off, which comes out to about $14.99 a year. So click the link below or go to CuriosityStream.com slash Clayton and save 25% off today. This is an extremely affordable deal compared to other streaming services that I think you'll enjoy. So once again, thank you to CuriosityStream for sponsoring today's video. Now, back to Jurassic Park. So one of the things that surprised me the most about the first Jurassic World in 2015 was how much imagery and how many ideas from the Crichton novels they had put back into the series after not really adapting Lost World much at all in the second movie. Of course, Jurassic Park 3 was kind of its own thing, but it did adapt a version of the Ceridactylus aviary from the first book, as well as swapping out the raft for a boat and the T-Rex for a Spinosaurus in one of the action scenes. But starting with Lost World, man, this series deviated heavily from what it was based Based on in the first place. That's why seeing not only the return of Dr. Wu, but also a version of his conversation with John Hammond on making the dinosaurs more entertaining for the park guests, that really surprised me in the theater, and I could tell from the trailer that the imagery of a motorcycle being involved with raptors was going to be a thing, but to later see stuff like a dinosaur that could camouflage was even more surprising. I think this was due to the other movies not even bothering to address those ideas in their runtime, so at the time, this was very new for the films to adapt. Of course, they were changed and altered in the final versions of the movies from what they were originally written as in the books, but comparing it to what was adapted in Lost World, it didn't really shock me. With that being said, as the series went on, fewer of these things seemed to get adapted into the movies, and by the time we got to Dominion, I really thought they were going to have some version of the famous DX disease that Michael Crichton talked about in the second novel, but instead they opted to go for a new creation of locusts instead, which I thought was a very poor substitute for what was originally a more compelling threat that was actually well integrated with the dinosaurs themselves. I even thought it would have been a timely inclusion given everything that's happened in the last couple of years but in the end, the Jurassic World trilogy seemed to stray pretty heavily from Michael Crichton's books and more into a safer and more Hollywood rendition of the Jurassic Park universe that I wasn't too enthusiastic with towards the end. I initially did think this trilogy would be much more straightforward of a Michael Crichton adaptation, but when you get to stuff like the Locust, which they make a big deal of being invasive and destroying the ecosystem, I can't help but wonder what was wrong with just using the dinosaurs for that. I mean, they treat those animals like everything is going to be fine and we coexist peacefully, but why are these locusts the things that are going to disrupt the ecosystem? I just thought that was a very odd decision to make. Now, what sets the books and the movies apart isn't just the differences in how they handle their stories, but I think there's a fundamental difference in how the animals are treated as well as how the themes of these stories play out in the adapted movies. For starters, Michael Crichton talked a lot about science and the unchecked hubris of man when it came to tampering with bioengineering for the sake of being the first to do something, and in the movies, I can't help but feel like this line of thought, the whole, the whole thing Crichton was warning us about, is now being celebrated 
with the addition of Jurassic World Dominion, which would rather treat the dinosaurs like they're some kind of untouchable creatures that we can live alongside in a fantastical way, as opposed to a set of invasive species that could destabilize ecosystems. Now look guys, I know the go-to response to this is usually that we are the dominant life forms on planet Earth, so nothing can challenge us as humans. But the problem with that line of thought is that, I, I can't believe people don't understand this, it's completely opposed to what Jurassic Park is all about in the first place. The whole cautionary tale of these stories was about how mankind overestimates himself and relies so much on that crutch of an ego that we don't see what's coming. And in the case of Jurassic Park, it was about several different things that were going wrong in the perfectly controlled environment that the scientists thought they had created expertly. The idea of a lysine contingency was put into place in case the animals ever left the island so that they'd die if they weren't given the supplemental enzymes. The problem is the creatures just adapted by eating lysine-rich foods. Then they made sure all the animals were females so no more would be running around unattended to, but they didn't expect the animals to adapt and change due to the frog DNA and start breeding. You know, the, the whole point of this series was originally the idea of mankind saying, look at us, we are invincible. Nothing can topple our science. We are literally gods. We have created life. And then for the dinosaurs, to prove them wrong because they had relied so heavily on the idea that they were untouchable to begin with. The idea of people thinking they are too advanced and too sophisticated to stop the animals should be the point of view of a villain in a Jurassic Park story. It should be some guy that thinks he's all high and mighty on himself. Somebody who thinks he's got a handle on everything only to learn the hard way that you can't control mother nature. And look, I'm a big fan of these movies. I've been a fan of Jurassic Park forever. I do think now I've been a little too lenient on a lot of them, but that doesn't mean I'm not a fan. You know, you can still like something while understanding it has gigantic flaws. And I'm always going to be a fan of Lost World Jurassic Park, even though it is very different from the book. And I'm always going to like, you know, dinosaur stuff in general. But I think we do need to acknowledge that if they're going to make more of these, they should really do more Michael Crichton stuff because honestly... That's what Jurassic Park's all about in the first place. This is another reason why I felt like the end of the most recent movie was such a letdown for me on a fan level. I know some of you guys really liked it, but to see the quetzalcoatl pterosaurs just flying around with modern birds in harmony together was just, it was jaw-droppingly insane to me. I don't understand why the filmmakers thought that these dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures would just assimilate with modern life on such a symbiotic level that they wouldn't even bother showing the audience how species could, like, couldn't coexist because of the fact that they were literally introducing huge predators into modern ecosystems, but the movie didn't make that a part of the plot at all. We saw one cheetah, like, attacking a compi, and I just wish that we had gotten something like velociraptors going against lions or a Tyrannosaurus Rex breaking into a zoo. I mean, they could have a whole tribute to the Valley of Guanji there by having a T-Rex take down an elephant. That sounds awesome. That sounds Jurassic Park. Instead, they kind of treated the dinosaurs like there's some kind of background issue that we don't really have a big problem with, which makes me wonder why they made such a big deal out of them getting out all over the place in Fallen Kingdom to begin with. It's like, man, you, uh, you really hyped up dinosaurs all over the world to be just like like something in the background. Why'd you do that? That's that's weird in my opinion. And look, I know that realistically everyone's going to just say that mankind is invincible when it comes to a dinosaur invasion. You know, they, they say that's more realistic, and I understand why they would say that. But look, man, if you're making a Jurassic Park movie, you know, something that's in a series of stories that are supposed to be primarily about how mankind underestimates nature, look, call me crazy, but I think you need to go into more of a dinosaurs ruling the earth kind of story instead of a peaceful, fantastical one. This is why I think Michael Crichton would probably not not have been the biggest fan of where these movies went in the long run. Even at the end of the first book, when the military firebombs the island, Isla Nublar is destroyed, with the humans thinking that they've cleaned up the mess and that the dinosaurs have been stopped from getting out. But at the very end of the story, they reveal that several species had gotten off of the island and that they'd begun to eat those lysine-enriched crops and run into the mountains where they were harder to find. We already know they can breed, so yeah, they're going to be an invasive species. And by the time you get to the Lost World, you learn 
learn that it's not only raptors and compies that got away, but that the giant body of something that was described as an ornitholestes by a paleontologist, or possibly even a Carnotaurus by some people's assessment from later knowledge in the book, that thing also made it to the mainland. And it not only got here, but that story introduced a deadly disease that could be spread by the animals as well. Something that not only makes sense on a dinosaur threat level, but something that could also lead into a greater story about running against the clock to find a cure to this disease. That was a cautionary tale against blind science running free and egotistical hubris of humans causing problems for the world that was started in Jurassic Park. And that is the kind of story that I think Crichton would have loved to have seen adapted into the movies. It's for this very reason that I think one of the best places for Universal to look at for the future of this brand, and if they make more, I don't even think they should, but you know, you can't stop them at this point. It's probably that newer trilogy of Planet of the Apes movies that was written by Rick Joff and Amanda Silver. And I only bring those up because they actually got credited as writers on the first Jurassic World. So it's not like it's that crazy of an idea for them to think about in newer movies. Now, with me saying all that stuff, I will say that not every Jurassic Park sequel was devoid of Crichton adaptations to some degree because that just wouldn't be fair and it's not true. They did introduce the idea of Hammond having a genetics partner in Fallen Kingdom. They talked more about the volcanic activity in the islands, which was only briefly described in The Lost World. And having each movie introduce a species from the novels was fine as well. You know, Jurassic World did Apatosaurus, Fallen Kingdom did the Carno, and Dominion had the Microceratus, which at the time in the 90s we called Microceratops, but whatever. They did bring a few things through. I just wish that they used the author's books as a guiding framework instead of something to randomly mine from for very minute topics instead of very serious thematic ideas, which is what I think he did best. You know, when they reintroduced Dr. Wu in Jurassic World, I was like, wow, not only is he back, but he's like, he's how he is in the books. He's actually very uncontrollable in the sense that he doesn't think he's doing anything wrong and he's just making more of these things to advance science in his own name. That's cool. That's compelling. They built that character properly and much more than the first movie did where he's just, I don't think he's like a very random cameo. But when you see how these movies played out for me personally, and I know they have their fans, I'm really happy that people like them, but I I think if this series wants to actually represent Jurassic Park in a very good way and to win back people like me who are becoming a bit more critical of what they've become, they should really look to the Michael Crichton novels for inspiration. Because these books, man, Jurassic Park and the Lost World, Lost World in particular, has so much that they didn't touch at all in the movies. Like when when you come to the second film, they adapt uh, the Challenger trailers, the High Hide, there's a scene with long grass and those things go over a cliff but they only have like maybe three or four people that even share the same name in the Lost World movie and the characterizations of these people is radically different they merge characters together they change things about them it's not an adaptation of that book at all at no point in time do they talk about the DX disease at no point in time is Lewis Dodson in the Lost World Jurassic Park or Biosyn mentioned in general they don't talk about the little box that actually subdues animals before they steal eggs there's no Mayasaura. It's just shocking to me. Michael Crichton wrote that book to be turned into a movie and they never did it. <laughs> but anyways, guys, these are all just my own thoughts and opinions on the franchise as a whole. I am glad that I did read the books when I was younger and got a better grasp on what this story was about in the first place, apart from just growing up with the first couple of movies. But now as an adult and seeing six Jurassic Park films made, I think it's time that Steven Spielberg goes back to those books and does full-on adaptations. You don't gotta do remakes, you don't gotta do some sort of reboot and mess with the timeline. But man, if you just treat your story matter seriously and have the dinosaurs as threats, you can go a long way and I think a lot of people will really appreciate that. Anyways guys, these are all just my own thoughts and opinions on the subject matter. What do you think about the Jurassic World trilogy and the Jurassic Park books and how they relate to each other when everything's said and done and what do you think of my ideas to actually have them go back to the source material and adapt them wholeheartedly? Whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens and engine executives, as well as all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. You've all helped my channel immensely and I'm incredibly grateful for all of that support. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you all consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video guys and as always, take it easy.